Uh, so as Aaron mentioned, I'm Dan Anderson from Iowa State University. Uh, all right, so a little outline of uh, what I hope to cover for you. A little bit about why we do some odor control, uh, sort of why what the Iowa perspective is at the current time and maybe why some of these uh, things got implemented. And then we'll talk about two that I got an opportunity to do a little bit of monitoring on at a couple of swine barns located here in the state. The first one being an electrostatic particle ionization and geotextile fence. And the second one being a trickling filter uh, wet scrubber where they utilize some water. So I have a couple pictures there and we'll talk through both of those in a little bit more detail, but you can kind of get an idea of uh, maybe what we were trying to do. So in terms of odor control in Iowa, uh, we use a system called a master matrix for uh, citing new animal confinement facilities. And basically what this is, is a scorecard. There's 880 possible points. Uh, a site needs to get 440 of them to be uh, constructed and you need to get 25% of the available points in any category, with one of those categories being air quality, right? And that's where the odors come into concern. Historically, most of the time, our operations have got those points just through siting requirements, right? From being certain distances from neighbors uh, and other things like that, uh, with more points coming the further you are away. Uh, with time and people moving maybe from cities out into the countryside, uh, just some of the better sites already being taken, those points are getting a little bit harder to find and now some of our farms are looking for what's the next step, what can we do to improve some of these situations where it's hard to build a new swine barn. Along with that, I think we all recognize that there's lots of challenges with odor control. Uh, first and foremost, I think the cost of these systems uh, is sometimes scary, sometimes overwhelming, or, or what are some of the simple options out there? And then sort of how hard is it to manage? How can I integrate it into my, my normal barn system? Uh, what changes do I have to make? And all those are important questions to answer as we sort of think about what we're going to do. Most of the time when we've uh, seen these situations, the farmers are, I grow pigs, I know how to do that really well how do I start thinking about odor and what, what do I have to do differently? And that can lead to some challenges in management uh, if, if we have to change their barn or their system because of that. So I think in terms of odor sources, we all recognize that uh, there's really a couple that come into play and those are manure storages, land application, and with land application injection has done a nice job handling a lot of that situation. Uh, but with building air and especially in Iowa where we're almost exclusively in a deep pit manure storage system, right? So all that manure is stored in the barn that uh, building air can be a continuous source of odor and especially at certain times of the year uh, when we're doing some agitation and pump out it might be even a little bit stronger. Uh, so that is one of the concerns where more and more of our focus tends to be going. Uh, a few years back now, uh, a few of us here at Iowa State University helped to put together this tool about just what are some of the options out there for odor control. And I gave you a website link there, but that really started some farmer interests in the state about what options are available, what can I do, and they, they took inspiration from some of these ideas and said, well, I think I could do that, or I think it, I could do it a little bit differently. And, and then they started asking some questions about, if I did this, how effective would it, would it be? And in some cases, it mirrored what we were trying to show in here relatively well, and in some cases, they put a new spin on an existing technology, and we had a chance to go and do a little research with them. So the first technology I'm going to talk about is electrostatic precipitation. Uh, So electrostatic systems work by basically imparting a charge to the dust particles. So we're trying to make those dust particles sticky and stick to things. Uh, so oftentimes with these systems, you'd see something like some suspended wire in the barn or a corona wire. And that wire is going to be at a pretty high voltage, normally around 30,000 volts, uh, but have really low current, right? So we're trying to get that to discharge some static electricity essentially impart that uh, charge on a, onto uh, the dust particle and make it stick to things so that it doesn't move around. Uh, you can see an example picture here in the barn where oftentimes these systems, we do see a lot of dust accumulation on certain components in the barn. Uh, there has been some monitoring that has showed improvement for dust odor and even pig performance, uh, but then there's also been some concerns about is it a shock hazard or how do we handle some of these dust challenges in the barn. Uh, just another schematic sort of how they work and especially in the case where we were looking at in this case where it's a flow through system on the exhaust air essentially what we want to have happen is that exhaust air and those dust particles to go by some in our case wires right where they're going to discharge some static electricity try and make those dust particles sticky so that they'll cling to things and then as that air flows down hopefully through another filter or by some metal objects or grounded plates we can collect that dust and not have it transported away from the farm. Uh, so one of our swine integrators came to us and said, we've 
we've been thinking about putting in some of these systems. They have uh, some electrostatic ionization and then a geotextile fence behind it. Uh, we're gonna put in a tunnel ventilated barn. So right here, you can sort of see my schematic, right? We have some tunnel fans. Uh, they put in this geo, they put in this uh, electrostatic precipitator, this fence, this ionization fence, and then a geotextile uh, fence downwind. And they said, how effective is this? How's it really going to work, right? So what we did is we said, we're gonna try and take a sample coming out of their primary tunnel fan. So that fan would almost always be running and get an inlet sample. And then we'll get a downwind sample after it's passed through both that ionization wire and through the geotextile fence. Uh, so we did a couple different types of measurement here. We collected some odor samples via Tedlar bags uh, and then brought them back to the lab and did tri-choice forced uh, olfactometry from them, trying to determine the uh, dilutions to threshold. So when our panelists could just pick that up and then we did some uh, sampling for particulate matter of various sizes, either total suspended particulate, uh, particulate matter less than 10 microns and particulate matter less than 2.5 microns in size. So to help with this, with that, uh, we built this box uh, around that tunnel fan that we were measuring. Uh, there is some holes in the side, so it doesn't block all the dilution air that could potentially move through that. We were trying to make it so that uh, the air we were measuring was the inlet uh, going into the system and then past it. Uh, so we did do this at two different farms, uh, both run by the same integrator and both relatively new farms. Uh, we started monitoring basically when they put, it, put pigs into those buildings. Uh, we sampled at each site every other week. So we'd go to one site one week, the next site the next week with all our equipment to take the measurements. Uh, we did have two sampling locations. So either basically coming right out of the, directly from that fan, about four feet downwind of that fan, but right at the center point before it would have passed through the ionization fence and then uh, about uh, four feet on the downwind side of the geotextile fence. And then we did this for two configurations. Uh, one week when we were at a farm, we would have the ionization fence turned off and then the next week we'd have it turned on. So we were trying to isolate what's the impact of ionization, what's the impact just of the uh, geotextile fence. All right, for our first result here, I'm gonna talk about the odor samples. And like I said, this was taken with uh, Tedlar bags and then triforced olfactometry. Uh, when we looked at what we saw, uh, when we didn't have that electrostatic ionization turned on, basically we saw no odor difference uh, either upwind or downwind of the system, right? So uh, right there, there was no statistical difference between what we were determining for odor. On the other hand, when we had that ionization fence turned on, we did get a statistical difference in uh, the amount of odor. And we saw basically a 31% reduction in odor coming out of uh, that facility as a result of being treated through the fence. In terms of particulate matter, in this case, we saw the same impact, but we didn't see a whole lot of difference between uh, when the fence was on or off. As a matter of fact, we didn't see a t statistical difference between the, the two uh, situations. So I pooled all the data into uh, just an upwind and downwind. I will caution that some of this uh, upwind downwind different, right? We were statistically different for all the parameters, but some of that difference may have been caused by a little bit of dilution air uh, going through that box. And we did take some samples when we didn't have that box there. Uh, but overall, we did see a, a statistical decline in all types of particulate matter coming out of those fans with a little distance. Uh, so they were statistically different at uh, less than 0.05 for all three particulate matters. And uh, we saw about a 50% reduction in total suspended particulate, 37% uh, reduction in PM10, and then a 31% reduction in PM2.5. Uh, we did try and do uh, a little bit of sampling uh, when we didn't have that box in there just to sort of understand what the distance downwind was having as well as without the geotextile fence. And in those cases, when we were sampling, uh, we got about a 20% reduction in all three of those uh, particulate matter sizes. So some of it probably is just a distance from the fan effect, uh, but some of it was a real treatment difference, we think. The other thing I wanna note about these barns is that it was a tunnel ventilated barn, and this treatment was only on the uh, tunnel fans, which certainly handles the majority of air movement from the facility, uh, but it wasn't on all the fans. Uh, while this facility didn't have pit fans, it does have minimum ventilation fans located on the sidewall. Uh, so especially during the winter or uh, lower ventilation conditions, uh, some air would come out of these fans and that air remained untreated. And then uh, the site did put in vegetated 
barriers around it, but they were pretty small and they were installed during the course of the monitoring and probably didn't have any impact on what we actually measured.